from KTUL Tulsa. You're watching Good Day Tulsa. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us for Good Day Tulsa. Now, Bud, when we left here on Friday, there was quite a cliffhanger. You mm -hmm. were going to be participating in a wrestling match. It was to benefit a young boy who's yeah. got some health challenges right mm -hmm. now. And I know you used to wrestle back in the day. Yep. How did it go in the ring on Friday? It actually went pretty good. It was me versus the Broken Arrow bad boy, Justin Lee-ish. Ah. I wasn't really into oh a, a, a full ball out brawl. You'll be able to see right here. Okay. Now, he's talking junk now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stop him. All right. It, oh, are you? Okay. Uh, now, where's your singlet? I figured there, you'd be okay, wearing it. Okay, hang the... on, hang on. Oh. It's about to get ugly. Okay. Here we go. Oh! Oh, man. Oh, oh yeah! What? Look at oh, there! Top what? of the slam! Take him down for Get a him, one! Get him! A two! Get him. A three! three. Woo. Thank you very much. That was pretty nice. Man! Pretty nice. You didn't think I had it in me, did you? I did not. No, I got to be honest. I did not. I figured you'd pull a hammy or something. Well, well oh, I, I told you my back's been hurting all day. Now we know why. <laughs> well, did you get anything out of the out of this fantastic The joy match? of watching that man go there. Take a look at his oh, wait, belt. Take wait. a look. Now that, now that's dope right there. That's, it took three people to hold it up. I was going to say, That's yeah. a lot of belt. It's a lot of belt. Yeah. Now, just so you know, yeah. the uh, Broken Arrow bad boy, Justin Lee, did not lose his belt. Okay. But they right. cheated to win. So well, that's why I went back in the ring, and I was like, there's going to be no cheating around here. Okay. And that's when he was all like, meh, meh, meh. And then he turned around, and he, he ran into Big Metal Thrash. And, well, that's what happens when you run into Big Metal Thrash. You get the big old slam. Okay. All right. Oh. I'm seeing that there might have to be a rematch. Oh, there's a point. rematch coming. Oh, yeah? You can bank on it. It'll be in May. Now, okay. while we're talking about wrestling, did you see where the WWE is getting sold? Yes, I did. This is some big news, apparently. Yeah. They're going to combine with the company that runs UFC to create a 21 Point four billion dollar sports entertainment company. Oh man! Yeah. All right. Uh, mm. Hopefully they'll keep all the wrestlers that they already have, though, because yeah, well, I kind of like Cena. And I hate to see any of them come up out of work because they're you know poor I know. and struggling I'm and whatnot. I'm betting you that you know he won't yeah. be able to make ends meet. No, you don't want that. <laughs> well, well, speaking of sports here, I guess you can call wrestling yeah. the sport. But baseball is back, and the Tulsa Drillers will be opening their season Thursday night with a homestand against the San Antonio Mission. Yeah, we have a family four pack of tickets for the upcoming Grand Slam. Saturday with News Channel 8. First pitch, 7.05. You want to get there early because we have a really cool Drillers hoodie giveaway for the first 1,500 fans in attendance. But to get that, you got to go through the Union Home Mortgage Oil Derrick or the Osage Casino Hotel Greenwood entrance. All right, now we do have some tickets to give away right now, so give us a call. Our contest line number is 918-460-1001. The eighth caller will be our winner, so start dialing and good luck to you. Yeah. All right, we have a fun show today. We have Oklahoma Joe's in the kitchen this morning, and man, it smells, smell. it smells a pretty amazing around it here today. It is beautiful for this morning. We'll talk about some brisket. We'll talk about pastrami. There's a lot happening with that. Yeah, and we're also going to be talking with one of the stars of General Hospital. They just celebrated their 60th anniversary on Saturday. I know. It's almost, drama. As, almost as much drama as The Bachelor, so we'll talk right. about that. <laughs> and uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll learn how Oklahoma became our state song directly from the man who made it happen 70 years ago. Keep it here. Former Governor George Nye is the man responsible for Oklahoma being our state song. When he was a young man in the Senate or in the state legislature, we were able to get the story of how he made it possible before he conducted the song himself at last week's Rogers and Hammerstein concert at the historic Will Rogers High School Auditorium. When I was a sophomore in high school at McAllister, I was listening to the Lucky Strike hit parade every Saturday night. Lucky Strike hit parade played the 10 top songs in America. Number 10, number nine, they would announce them. Then the number eight, number seven, number two, number one. I'm sitting there one night reading, and there was a roll of drums. Number one, Oklahoma. And I'm this sophomore in high school. I said, they're singing about my state. It was during World War II. It was on Broadway. I didn't even know it was a Broadway musical. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. And, and the then 10 years later, I was in the legislature, and I had fallen in love with just representing Oklahoma, representing the, the uh, 
and we had a state song, but I thought, my gosh, the most popular song in the world is about our state. We ought to have that as our state song. So I introduced the bill uh, 70 years ago this year. We had a man in the legislature. I was one of the, I came two years before. I was the youngest member of the legislature. In fact, I was a senior in college when I filed for office. So I still the kid. And we had a gentleman there from Ada, a nice guy, but we called him Old Man Huff. Old Man Huff. He probably was 60, but at that time he was old to us. And he couldn't believe, as much as he loved Oklahoma, that we wanted to change the state song from a song written about the steeped in tradition and couched in history. We want to name, put it written by two guys who live in New York never even been to Oklahoma. The bill almost w was, was going to lose that day. So I b realized that if we let them vote, they would vote to kill the bill. Because while he was speaking, he walked among the floor and sang the old song, crying, and having them stand while he sang, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. And I thought, man, that's gone. So I said, Mr. Speaker, I move we lay this bill over for one legislative day until tomorrow. Nobody complained, so they laid it over. I called the rep I got the representative from Chickasha, where we had the uh, girl women's college, and I said, you got a girl choir down there that can sing Oklahoma. I said, we just did that performance last last week. I said, I want them up here tomorrow in their costumes. And then I called Jenkins Music Store in Oklahoma City, and I said, you got, you got any interested in legislation? And they said, yes. I said, well, maybe I can help you with some of it, but I need a piano tomorrow. <clears throat> and then, since I'm here in Tulsa, I called a guy who was living in Tulsa who'd gone to high school at McAllister with my three older brothers, and I was in junior high, Ridge Bond, and he was the only Oklahoman to ever star as Curly on Broadway. And I said, Ridge, you still got any of that stuff you wore on Broadway? He said, yeah. I said, put it on and come down here tomorrow. So the girls' choir came and sang, and then suddenly the, the piano went boom, 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 and Ridge had been hiding outside. He kicked open the door, we had swinging doors. He kicked the whole, he said, oh, Oklahoma. And the crowd went wild. The balcony was full of people that I'd, I'd put up there. <laughs> <laughs> and they stood and cheered and they sang and the legislators stood and cheered. And then I turned and said, Mr. Speaker, I moved passage of this bill making Oklahoma the state song. <laughs> and that's how it passed. Governor Johnston Murray, governor of Oklahoma, signed the bill with a long pinpointed pen, dipped it in ink, and signed the bill, making it the state song. Then he took the pen and handed it to me. And I have it right here by my side, 70 years later. I still have that pen. Well, coincidentally, that very day, McAllister High School was having its annual concert. So I took the pen, I got in my car, I drove to McAllister, 120 miles. I arrived at the Masonic Temple where the concert was, no rehearsal. They had been playing several songs before I got there. So at the end of the show, they introduced me. I took that pen out and conducted for the first time after the governor had signed the bill, I conducted the state song to be played by my high school orchestra and, sing, and it was sung by the chorus and the crowd stood and cheered. And it's amazing that to this day, I can just reach in and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to get the same pen 70 years later.
Now that's the story. George Nye is the third oldest living, living governor at 95 years old. How cool was that? We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by the Tulsa Artists Guild to talk about their upcoming spring show. That's next here on Good Day Tulsa. The Tulsa Artists Guild Spring Show opens this Thursday at Grant's Frames. And joining me to share a little bit more about it is the wildlife artist and chair of the Spring Show, Helen Howerton, and owner of Grant's Frames, Grant Denny. Thank you so much for, for joining us this morning. I've been learning so much about art just in the few minutes I've been able to talk to, to both of you. Thank you for all of the, the great knowledge. But this is a really neat opportunity for folks to find out more about Oklahoma artists, Tulsa artists, and also buy some beautiful artwork. Tell me a little bit about the, That's about right. the show. Well, actually, um, Tulsa Artists Guild has been in existence for 90 years. Wow. Yes. It was just started with a small group of friends that wanted to have venues to show their work and to support each other in what they were doing and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's grown since then, but it is juried for membership. The Spring Show is our first exhibition since the COVID started. Oh, my goodness. In 2020. And uh, so we're really excited about it. We've got over 50 pieces of original artwork. Okay. There are no prints, uh, you know, multiple prints, right. but they, we do have sculpture, 3D pieces, as well as two-dimensional paintings and drawings. And oh my goodness, well these mediums. are gorgeous. And so this will all be Oklahoma and Tulsa artists based. And, and some of the, this is just beautiful. Now who was the uh, artist on this particular piece? This is Larry Wade, and he lives in Collinsville, Oklahoma. Okay. And um, he exclusively does the bronzes. Okay. Too. So well, some uh, of the art. These are beautiful watercolors and acrylic. I saw your name on this one up here. Oh, this is a piece okay. of yours here, and I yeah, I, I love animals. And so the uh, fox is just a. So you do mainly wildlife art. Too. Primarily, but yeah. I do a lot of commission work, and I've done celebrities for people you oh, know wow. that were private commissions and painted cattle and all kinds of things for people and for their collections. Well this too. is a great opportunity for folks to come out and find some original artwork, some beautiful right. artwork. Now Grant tell me how you are involved in this because you were telling me you're doing something really nice for the artists. What we're doing is the the gallery uh, we have the art uh, throughout the, the, the area uh, when we uh, bring the artists groups in uh, basically I try to make as much of the, uh, the the money that would be because each piece is for sale uh, that they get the majority of it and we basically take just enough to cover basically credit card fees so okay. it's just a nice return for the artists well certainly now mm -hmm. since you own the frame shop there so fo people can get the artwork there and then they can get it framed and and take it out the door and if have that's it. What, if that that could be done yes <laughs> okay that's a beautiful way though to showcase the art and i know that the the, uh, the it's going to be running for a little bit of time this isn't something that's just running over one weekend correct? it's until june 3rd okay uh, and that's a saturday and that'll be the last day okay now folks so. can come out and this will help local artists i mean during the pandemic, I mean, gosh, musicians, artists, people who normally count on others coming to see their work or listen or buy or whatever, they, they missed out. So this would be right. a really neat opportunity to help support local artists yes. and find ways for them to, uh, to, to earn some of the money they missed out on. That's right. And we, uh, Grant has been wonderful to work with us on putting together this show. I think we have a really good committee working on this show from social media expert yeah. <laughs> within our group. Uh, two other people who've contributed um, things to toward our event, our reception. It's going to be this coming Thursday okay. from 6 to 8. Okay, and, and then the art show will go on um, until June, June 3rd. So, well, here's the information if you'd like to come out and attend. Thank you both for coming by to tell us about this. Thank is you. All this is just beautiful and so <laughs> pretty. You, uh, it's hosted by Grants Frames, 81st and South Sheridan. If you'd like more information, you can find them on Facebook at the Tulsa Artists Guild. Well, the Alzheimer's Association and the Tulsa Opera have partnered up for a special presentation. Find out how you can take part in that as well after we come back. Well, for those suffering with Alzheimer's and dementia, music can a lot of times bring a sense of calm. The Tulsa Opera has partnered with the Alzheimer's Association for a special Lunch and Learn event. And today, Jacob Guinan with the Alzheimer's Association Community Outreach Coordinator and Danny Kyle, Tulsa Opera Director of Outreach, join me to fill us in on all of the details. I was asking when I first sat down with both of you in the lobby, like, how in the world did you guys get partnered up, Alzheimer's and opera? You don't often think of those two things necessarily going together, 
But then once you explained, it's a beautiful program that's happening. So first of all, let's talk about music and Alzheimer's and how they can help somebody with Alzheimer's might uh, respond to hearing music. Absolutely, and music is one of the best ways that we find to engage with our loved ones who are living with Alzheimer's, especially mm -hmm. as they continue to advance and they start to have more trouble with communication and talking maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do see, you know, that part of the brain that deals with music and that long-term memory seems to last a lot longer into the disease, and so it's a really lovely way to connect with people um, in a way that we used to, singing songs together and enjoying music together. Right, music that they might know. So, all right, Danny, I want to know how the opera is involved in this. You're doing something really special and I think really wonderful for folks with Alzheimer's. Yes, in December, Tulsa Opera launched our own Songs by Heart program, and we take trained opera singer with a pianist into memory care units and lead an interactive sing-along, oh and it's just gosh. magical. Okay, tell me about some of the things that you've seen. I know you said there's some really neat stories that have come out of some of those visits. Yeah, so the singers are leading songs that the patients know all the words to, Oklahoma, You Are My Sunshine, and we've seen patients who have been nonverbal for months, smile, start to mouth all the words. Oh we get um, people up and dancing sometimes and oh, wow. they just reach out and they want to dance with us and really be involved. What a wonderful gift you're giving them. I mean truly to be able to connect especially for those who have fallen into the advanced stages where it becomes a nonverbal issue and then to bring something back into their minds that is good and positive that they're familiar with. What a, what a great thing you're doing. So I know that there's a lunch and learn that's coming up for folks mm -hmm. who may be getting a loved one with a diagnosis or even getting the diagnosis themselves. Tell me about the lunch and learn. Right, well, you know, as the Tulsa Opera uh, works to help enrich the lives of people who are living with this disease, we also wanna, as the Alzheimer's Association, uh, look to help the families of the people who are living Certainly. with this too. And like you said, the people who may have recently gotten a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna be holding a lunch and learn on April 14th at noon at the Opera Building near downtown. Oh. Okay. And uh, we're inviting people to come down for an hour presentation to bring their lunch for a brown bag lunch. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk a little bit about Alzheimer's and dementia, what they are, um, the diagnostic process, the current research, and what resources are available for families who are dealing with this right now. Okay, yeah, I mean, because I've heard that for every person that has Alzheimer's, of course, you have usually at least one, usually two family members or more who can also be affected by that. So it's a, it's a good thing to get the whole family involved or the caretakers at the very least to come by and find out, here's what we can do here's what's working here's new medications here's new strategy and of course network with others who may be going through the same thing absolutely all right well you guys are both wonderful thank you for coming in I applaud the opera on doing something so positive and wonderful and thank you for the information on the lunch and learn here's how you can find out more about the Alzheimer's and Tulsa Opera lunch and learn it's April 14th at noon you can check out tinyearl.com slash alls opera UAD now, let's go outside on the News Channel 8 weather deck, sponsored by Burnett Home Improvement. On the Burnett Home Improvement weather deck, a mix of sun and clouds out here, and the winds really, really strong. 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting to near 30. The city looks good through the A-Best Roofing Live camera, and I was looking at uh, Broken Arrow down to the Rose District. Everything looking fabulous over there. Again, everywhere you look across green country, it's a mix of sun and clouds. Our temperature's in the mid-60s, depending upon where you are. Already heading towards 70. It's not even 930. Wind gusts in the 20s for most places and we'll talk about 84 for a high today let me come back in in a few minutes we'll talk about what's next because there is a chance for strong weather i'll tell you about it Well, I talked about this a minute ago, 84 when I was on the Burnett Home Improvement Weather Deck. That's our expectation for today. Some places are going to pass that. The southerly winds, very strong. Taking a look at the cloud cover, it's beginning to break up. That's good. That will help as the winds continue to push that warm Gulf moisture in here. We'll watch the temperatures go up on Tuesday. We'll call this 2, 3, 4 o'clock. A few showers, especially down to the south and east. Now, the next thing that will happen is the boundary will have a, a few more showers. So some in Coffeyville, we'll watch them kind of push in there if this model plays out. Coffeyville over towards Pryor. And in other words, we'll have a better chance for them to become a little more numerous. Looks like we could have some hail producers in there. And this is a model's perspective. And as we get closer, the thought is maybe they'll move just a little further to the west. We'll be watching, but that's kind of the thought. Then the heaviest stuff down to the south and east will continue to push out 
and make for another rough day all the way across the south, which is not good at all. But lucky for us, it looks like the ugliest of this weather is not going to hang here. That dry line may give us a thunderstorm today. The likelihood is it won't. That's the boundary out in front of it. Big picture shows at 430. That's 845. Notice the strong is going to set up right along in here. That comes at 445 a.m. and it jets on out. It should be a quiet night, but it could be enough in the way of some lightning and thunder around that could keep your dog awake. So in other words, Sonny, what I'm telling you is it might be a good night to give your dog the tramitol or whatever you uh, give yes. them. 84, 83, then the 50s back in the 60s and a good Easter weekend coming. What's that you give your dog? The tramitol? Tries it down. Tries oh, it down. Yeah, she will. Don't worry. She will be out like a light this evening. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> well, a little bit later in the show, we're going to be celebrating General Hospital's 60th anniversary. Hard to believe. Bub was able to talk to one of the stars of the show about this very important landmark. And right when we come back, we're excited. We're going to be trying a delicious brisket recipe from Oklahoma Joe's. Well, there's nothing like a great brisket. It smells phenomenal oh in here. Oh, my hmm? goodness. At first, I was like, what is that awesome, intoxicating smell? Of course, it's Joe Davidson from Oklahoma Joe's. He's here today to show us how to make a pastrami brine for briskets. I have never heard of a pastrami brine, Joe. Oh, my gosh. But I know, but, man, it smells amazing here. So tell me about this. You would think we'd only do this for St. Patty's Day, but right. we carry it all the way through March into Easter. So that's ah, the time we love to do okay. this. Pastrami is normally done out of like a round roast, things like that, but we're a barbecue joint, so we brine the brisket. So it's really unique. You have to go through a long process, and the ingredients really start out, uh, obviously, you know, we've got honey, uh, mustard seeds, you know, garlic, mm -hmm. pink, curing sugar, salts. Ah. That's the number one thing you've got to use in this regular salt, kosher salt, brown sugar. You take all those ingredients, and, and the recipe will be on our website, and you boil that to where it just gently comes to a boil with water. Then you add ice to it to cool that brine down, and then we like to use pickle buckets, and we put two briskets, and the brine covers up oh, the brisket, the whole packer trim brisket, and you leave it in that brine for five days. I'm gonna tell you that Whoa. four days is not quite enough. Six days, it'll get to where it's falling apart. I was gonna say you know? it get, yeah. yeah, it really does, you know, but five days is just perfect. And that's what gives the brisket this really pink hue to it all the way through. Oh, wow. And oh, my God. because we're doing these as, um, whole packer trims, you'll see a little bit of the normal brisket color there, but right. then you see the pinkness all uh, around that. And the thing the about this is look at that. Yes. I mean, this thing comes it, apart. We were talking about this. Brisket is an underappreciated meat. It holds its juice so well. Oh my it's gosh. a really good meat. It is a wonderful meat, you know, and no. used to, before barbecue joints came around and got really popular, it was a cheap cut of meat. Yeah. It's not anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. going to tell you, it's really an expensive cut. Now, the platinum of this is that when you do a whole packer trim brisket, you've got a flat, which is one muscle, then you've got a point, which is another one. This is what we make burnt ends out of. So oh, when you okay. look, talk about burnt ends, this is, in Texas, they call this the fatty brisket. Yeah. Normally, it's just chopped here in Oklahoma, but we do make burnt ends out of it. So when you cut this up, we cut them about an inch thick, mm -hmm. like this. Okay. And then, when that comes off of there, Look how oh my gosh. those burnt in, in the bark. Oh, Look at that. My. Yeah. It just comes apart like oh. that. Oh, beautiful. It's like I'm playing an accordion yeah. with right. me. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. I'm going to catch on. Tell Weird Al Yankovic. So yeah. what we do, you can get this as a dinner at Oklahoma Joe's. You can also, we make a Reuben out of this sliced oh as gosh. well. Mm. Or then we do what we would call the barbacolossal. So it's a burnt in barbacolossal sandwich, which would actually have this cheese, a couple of fat boy onion rings on top of that. Oh my gosh. And then on this Kaiser and top it off like this. And I'm telling you, you gonna that's, get the meat sweats the, out of this, that's, man. That's the, the good diamond. Meat that's the diamond of barbecue. Yeah, sounds you know? yeah. like heaven. It's yeah, going it to be. And you know what? There's only one way to find out, and that's we've got to try some of it here, right. okay. just a little bit. I think we so should. You, oh, yeah, if you I like a piece right now, you well, can. Of course I would. Yeah. Now, how do you get that good bark on there? Because you said in five days pickle brining, and yeah. then how do we get the good bark? On okay, there? so once we brine it, we'll take it and put this brisket rub on it, just like we do a normal brisket. Then we cook it 190 degrees for 12 hours 
and then we crank that cooker up to 275 using pecan wood and that's really what puts the bark on the outside of okay. this. So and you got this down to a fine art. It takes about 15 hours to cook these briskets. It sounds like I need to do two things. One, I need to come over and try it because you're making it Thank now you. through Easter. Yes. And number two is that rub is available at yeah. your location, it I'm is. sure, it and is. online no so question that I can do that. that. Let me try well, it. Thank now, you for sharing it with us. So okay, welcome. here we go. Now, one other thing I'll tell you, and this has oh nothing gosh. to do with the brine. Joe, that's you know, delicious. In Oklahoma, barbecue bologna is a specialty. Unbelievable. We do it all the time. I think it's here, our state meat, isn't it? In <laughs> May, it's National Barbecue Month, and we'll be doing $1 barbecue bologna sandwiches every Monday. But there's one, we give a limit to it because people buy too many, so we limit it to 100 sandwiches per person. Okay. okay 100 so per person. 100 per person. So don't, don't try and buy more <laughs> than 100. Don't come in here trying to pull no scams. <laughs> 100 total. That's it. Dude, that is amazing. That's well, so absolutely like that. amazing. Thank you very much thank for you. bringing this. Not like I didn't know here. if I had it from Oklahoma Joe's. It would be amazing. Well, thank still. you for having me here today. It's been a lot of fun. Man, right. thank you. All right, mm -hmm. for Oklahoma Joe's locations. And to order online, you can check out the website, Oak. OKJoes.com, <laughs> where you can also get that good brisket rub that you're going to need. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and we'll talk about the upcoming Mad Scientist Ball. And we'll also have a special science presentation right after Sunny finishes up her brisket. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in just a few short weeks, Discover Lab will be hosting their annual fundraiser with the Mad Scientist Ball. And joining us to share more about it and to perform a demonstration, I was so excited, is Deputy Director Alex Watson and Lead Outreach Educator Caitlin Gibbons. Thank you so much, ladies, uh, our Mad Scientists, today for coming in. To, to Before we get to the science experiment, I want to talk a little bit about what you guys do. Um, it's such a neat place to go to take kids, and it's fun for adults, too. It is. So we have all sorts of programming that we offer ages birth through sixth grade. Mm -hmm. um, we do outreach programs. We host Tulsa Public Schools three days a week throughout the school year. We offer field trips and programming for other students as well. And we also do outreach into the community and outside of Tulsa as well. Okay, yeah, and kids of any age, because I took, we took the seven-year-old and my son who just turned 22 and everybody had fun. I mean, it's a really neat place to go to. Now, this event that you guys are doing is not really for kids. This one's for the grown-ups because, of course, there's going to be some cocktails and some other things that are going on. Tell me about, it's a progressive dinner type of event. It is. So this is our annual fundraiser and rebranding into our new building. We're calling it now the Mad Scientist Ball. Okay. And so we are doing something a little different this year where instead of the traditional tables, you're going to carry your cocktail, you're going to carry your food and experience five different stations all related to STEAM. So science, engineering, technology, math, and the arts. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, this sounds like a lot of fun. Now tickets are available and so I'll We'll get to all that stuff in just a second on where you can find tickets because it is going to be a really fun night. But you can learn something when you're there as well. So we're doing yes. a science experiment yes. today. Right before we went on the air, I said, now, we're not, do I need to wear glasses? Is anything going to explode? No, no. And then a few minutes later, she goes, now, we're just going to do the explosion. And then, <laughs> wait, okay, so do I need to step no, over? No, you, you okay. are totally fine. So what I, I brought with us today, mm -hmm. I will wear glasses. Okay. I'm going to be a good example, safety first, is um, liquid nitrogen, which is something we've got oh, yeah. breathing in and out all the time. It's in our air. But it's normally gas mm -hmm. but if you get it really 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 cold it can be a liquid okay. so the boiling point of this is actually about negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit so it's cold 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 yeah. I'm just gonna pour it in here first you can kind of see there's the gas yeah and then we got a little liquid part there it is cold but it's not gonna hurt you good okay you're good <laughs> I think, don't, now doctors use this to freeze off mold yes and things exactly like that, right? that is one of the uses of okay, it I for can sure. feel the cold yes that. wow. you can, that's that negative 320 right there all right all right now I'm gonna put this lid on it it is gonna increase the pressure quite a bit it's gonna take about 700 times the space and that's what I mean by explosion but oh. it's a really fun safe it's safe explosion. fun yeah. explosion okay <laughs> I do need you to count down from three though or it doesn't work okay here yeah. we go yeah. all right yeah. here we go three yes two one Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> whoa all right that's really neat <laughs> froze off some of my skin tags. Thank you. I appreciate it. Happy, Happy to help. Happy to help. All right, so now this is one of the type of experiments and things that folks can yes. see when they come out. So even if you don't see this exact one, it's going to be something just as fun and interesting. Just as yeah. fantastic <laughs> and over the top. Yeah. All right, now tickets are available. When is the event, actually? It's coming up at the end of the month, correct? Sure, so it's Saturday, April 29th. It's going to be 7 to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. Tickets are on sale. They're $2.50 a piece. Mm -hmm. There are sponsorship opportunities as well. And if you can't attend, we do have a 
silent auction that's going online next week. Wonderful. And so we'll have all sorts of different items from a lifetime membership at Discovery Lab oh, wow. to a chef's table for six at Tavern. Oh my gosh. All right. So great prizes, great things to bid on. And of course, always fun when you go to the Discovery Lab. This <laughs> is such a great thing. Thank you so much for, for you know, doing you. my dermatology work yes, for anytime. me. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Once again, Saturday, April 29th from 7 to 10 at Discovery Lab in Tulsa, 3123 Riverside Drive. If you'd like tickets to this, it sounds like a blast. You can visit their website at themadscientistball.com.